If you play anything inside of the umbrella of rock guitar, whatever that is can be traced all the way back to the blues. The blues is one of the most expressive styles of music out there, and it is essential learning for any guitar player, especially guitar players who want to develop their lead guitar vocabulary. Now it's great because it allows us to explore different phrasings, different feels, and all sorts of different ideas within the confines of the blues. Now while many people think the blues is quite simple, in theory the technicality of blues is simple, but the application is where the difficulty lies. Many of the great blues players have fantastic feel and phrasing. Now while what they play might not be that technically difficult, making it sound right is the hard part. So in this video, we're going to learn seven of what I think are the greatest blues licks of all time. Each one of these comes from one of my favorite blues based songs and by my favorite players. And the idea is you can take these licks, you can borrow them, you can steal them, you can transpose them and use them to influence your own guitar solos. This video is brought to you today in partnership with musicradar.com. So down below in the description, there's a link to the Music Radar website. If you click that link, it'll take you over to a supporting article for this lesson. And if you want the tabs for this lesson, you can also get those via my Patreon link down below in the description as well. If you just click that link and support the channel on Patreon, you get access to all the tab files. So gear-wise, I'm using a very simple setup for this. I'm going to be changing guitar in and out depending on which artist I'm talking about. I'm starting with this Stanford Guitars Crossroad Marquee, which is a Les Paul style guitar. The guitar is going into the Blackstar Studio 10 6L6, which is running completely clean with a little bit of reverb, and that's running via the Two Notes Torpedo Captor X. And the drive I'm using in this video today is from the Walrus Audio Fundamentals range, and I'm using the Fundamental Drive for all of the drive sounds in this video. The first blues lick I'm going to talk about is from the Freddie King track, Hideaway. This is, I think, an essential blues lick for all players, because this actually starts you off on the idea of playing rhythm and lead at the same time. Now, this is a blues staple, I think. This has been covered by countless artists, Eric Clapton being one of those in his time with John Mayall and the Blues Breakers. He did a slightly more amped up version, but this is how you play the original. This lick goes between some open E major and E minor licks over an E blues progression, and it sounds like this. <laughs> This lick sounds way harder than it is to play. We're basically going between a couple of open string based licks and that usual 12 bar blues shuffle. So the 12 bar blues shuffle we're playing is based around open chords. We're doing it in both E and A depending on where we are in the measure. So we're starting off with this little pickup phrase. That's open B with a hammer onto the two, open E, two on the high E and slide up to the four. Straight into the shuffle. We're actually starting the shuffle on the A uh there. This is a triplet feel, one, a two, a three, a four. So we're starting not on the first beat, but just after it. So we're going straight into that two to the four motion there. That in itself can take a little while to get used to because the timing is slightly weird if you've never done that before, but once you get that locked in, it will sound great. Start off slow with that. Then we've got a second phrase, which goes like this. So here we're doing a hammer on from the open to the two on the B. Open E, then we're playing the two and sliding up to the four. Play the four, slide it back to the two, pull off to the open. Two on the B, open E. Straight back to that shuffle. Then we're doing this triplet roll. That's just open on the B with a hammer onto the two, and the high E played open. Play that three times, and that just rolls as a triplet. Then we're coming to A for the blue shuffle. Notice that time I went up to the 5th fret as well on the D string. 
We're repeating the phrase that does the two to the four slide. Back to the E. Then that rolling triplet idea again. Then this closes out with a four bar lick, which goes like this. So that lick is the second fret on the E. Slide up to that four again. We're still playing that triplet feel here. One, a two, a three. We're doing the slide on the three. Then we're playing open high E, second fret with a pull off back to the open to the two on the B. Then the rolling triplet thing again. There's a little ending on this. So we do three of the rolling triplets. Open B, two on the G, open B again. So those two bars together. We're then playing the open G with a hammer onto the one, the open high E, the third on the B, two on the G, slide that up to the four. Open E, play that four on the G again, slide to the two, pull off to the open, two on the D. Open high E, second on the A, open B, second on the G. So those two bars together. And now let's put that final phrase together once more. So while there is a lot of moving parts to that and it is quite hard to digest, all of the parts individually are quite easy. So learn them, play them slow, get the rhythms locked in and then build up the speed. Here's how that sounds once more in full. second lick we're going to talk about is from the Buddy Guy track, Damn Right I've Got the Blues. This is a really cool way to introduce a blues style song. Now this song is based more around a riff groove, but it still follows that kind of blues 12 bar idea. But if you're starting to write your own blues progressions and your own songs and ideas, this is a great way to introduce the song. Buddy Guy is a huge Strat player. So for this one, I'm using this Magneto Guitars U1 Sonnet Modern, and the lick sounds like this. So this one is quite easy to execute. The only thing that's slightly tricky is if you play along with the track, the intro is pretty much free time. Now, obviously the idea behind this is you can use this kind of intro to introduce your own blues ideas. So this is in the key of A minor. We're starting off in the second pentatonic position with a hammer on from the eight to the 10 on the B string. Then we've got this run where we play the nine on the G and then the hammer again. But you're playing that eight twice in quick succession there. So we're not hearing the main eighth fret from the hammer on, we're hearing the picked one, and then you're picking it again and hammering on straight away. Then we're playing the eight once more, and then we're playing the 12 on the G and sliding down to the seven. Now the eight on the B and the 12 on the G are actually the same note. But the reason we're doing that is just for the kind of effect of having the slide into the next note. Fifth on the G with a slight quarter tone bend. Then we're hitting the seven on the D. And that's our one, that's the start of the song. Then we've got our riff. This is a hammer on from the five to the seven on the A string, the five on the D. Seven on the A, five on the G, seven on the D. You can give that five on the G a slight quarter tone bend as you do it. 
Then we're sliding up to the fourth position for the last three notes. We're sliding up to the 12 on the G, 13 on the B, 14 on the G. So as I said, that is a great one for introducing your own blues tracks. Now you don't have to follow that note for note. You can just use that kind of idea or that sort of inspiration on how to start your own blues tracks. You can even put your own spin on that and put your own licks in there. It's really just the idea of showing you that a cool free time lick can start off a song in the right way. Buddy Guy is one of the last remaining blues legends. And yeah, he does know how to write a good guitar lick. Sounds like this in full. <laughs> Look number three, I'm back on the Les Paul style, and this is a Led Zeppelin one. This is the intro from the track Since I've Been Loving You. This is probably one of my favorite licks of all time. I love what Jimmy Page does with this. Jimmy Page is obviously best known for being more of a rock-based guitar player. He's really known for his faster bluesy solos, his more aggressive stylings, and his kind of sloppy, loose around the edges approach to things. But this song is really great at showing off his restraint as a blues player. I like this because he's got a couple of pentatonic outside notes in there as well, which we'll talk about in a moment. The lick sounds like this. So this lick sits inside the C minor pentatonic shape, but like I said, we've got a couple of outside notes. The notes come from the natural minor scale. One thing that Page does that's really interesting is he kind of emphasizes notes from the natural minor scale that you wouldn't normally emphasize in a blues track. So it gives the lick a slightly interesting flavor. The intro for this is actually free time for the first couple of bars. After the big string bend that gets sustained, the band then kick in into the 6-8 groove that basically underpins the rest of the track. So here's how the first lick sounds. Now a big part in getting this right is the touch and the way you approach playing the notes. So I'm actually playing with the same tone I've been using all through the lesson so far, which means if I dig in, I can get quite a bitey, aggressive sound. But what I'm actually doing here is I'm playing softer rather than playing hard. That just kind of opens up this dynamic range that Page is absolutely nailing in this track. So you want to pick softer because it just kind of makes the idea more dynamic. So starting off on the eight of the B, eight of the E. And we're playing the 11 on the B and the eight of the B again. And we're bending that 11 on the B up a full step and adding some vibrato. What we're doing is we're doing a slight rake into it. So you're just muting the D and G strings above it with your index finger as you go for that bend. And that's the point where the band kick in. The next lick is, this is where the natural minor notes start to come in. The next part of the lick, we're starting on the 11 of the high E. We're playing 11, 10, 8, 10. Then we're playing the 11 again, but this time we're pulling off to the 10 and the 8 in one movement. And hitting the 9 on the B. This is the note now that we wouldn't usually emphasize in a blues. This is the flat 6 of the natural minor scale. Sounds slightly weird over the chord. It is actually the minor third of the four chords. So if you time it right, it can work quite well, but it's not usually the note that we'd lean on in a typical sounding blues. Then we're doing another pull off from the 10 to the eight and the E, and we're playing that flat six three times. Eight on the B, 10 on the G. And then the last phrase of the lick starts on the seventh fret of the G. This is actually another outside note from the scale. This is the second interval of the scale. We're playing seven, eight, ten. And then we're playing the seven again and doing a hammer onto the eight. Then we're running down the pentatonic scale from the D string. You 
can do pull-offs if you want there. I did a pull-off on the D string. And then you're sliding to the 10 of the D to finish. So I love this lick because it's pentatonic and it's blues, but those outside notes that you add from the natural minor scale just give it a slightly different flavor. So you hear how it sounds once more in full. fourth lick that we're going to talk about is from the Cream song, Sunshine of Your Love. I'm sticking with the Les Paul on this one. Eric Clapton uses the Gibson SG at that point, but it's the same kind of idea. We're using twin humbuckers. I've got both pickups selected and the tone control for the bridge pickup rolled all the way off. You get this real throaty tone. It kind of takes all the highs out of it and it gives you that real kind of throaty Clapton-esque tone that he was using in the 60s. Now, this one's from the track Sunshine of Your Love. That entire guitar solo, in my opinion, is an essential one for all guitar players to learn. But I have picked one particular phrase, which is the opening phrase from the second half of the solo, where the backing for the solo goes to the chorus riff, and Clapton starts to get a little bit more fiery with the licks he's playing. I love this because this is one of those licks that really kind of propelled me in my own blues playing, so I think this is one of the best around. It's great to learn, and there's so many cool ideas in this lick. It goes like this. So this lick uses D minor pentatonic, shapes one and two. This is a really cool lick because what Eric Clapton is actually doing in this quite a lot is he's actually underbending some of the notes, which gives a slightly dissonant quality to his playing. And I think that's a really fun thing with this lick. So it starts off with what should be a full tone bend on the 12th fret of the G. We'd normally do a full tone there, but he's actually bending it slightly flat. So we're almost getting this flat five note. Then we're playing the 13 on the B, and then playing that bend on the 12 of the G once more before releasing it and playing it as a fretted note. And then landing on the 10. We're then playing the 12 on the G again and doing a pull off and then playing the 12 again and sliding it up to the 14. 13 on the B, 14 on the G, slide back to the 12, back to the 10. So it's like a little circle of notes there. So it's pull off, slide up to the B, slide down, back to the 10. Then we have this little pentatonic phrase, which is probably my favorite part of the entire solo. That is straight from the Albert King school of guitar. Eric was a huge Albert King fan, so you can really hear Albert's influence on that lick. This is a bend on the 12 of the G. Once again, we're going for somewhere between a half and a full tone. It can be slightly dissonant, that's okay. And then we're playing the 10 on the B and the 10 on the E. Then we're pre-bending that 12. So we're not picking it and then bending it up. We're actually bending it before we pick it. Picking it just to get the release to the 10 on the G, to the 12 on the D. So you get that kind of rushed sound with the bend. You're not hanging on that 10 for too long. You're just releasing that bend, play the 10 and get straight to the D string. Then 10 on the G with a slight quarter tone bend, 12 on the D, 12 on the A. That's a very Albert King inspired lick. And the final ascending phrase. This is Double stops on the 10 of the A and D with hammer-ons to the 12 and the A. Same thing between the D and G. So play the 10 on the D and G, hammer on the 12 on the D. And then 10 and 12 on the G. So even though that's only four bars of the entire solo, that's my personal favorite part of that. I think there's a lot of cool stuff in there to learn, but I would highly suggest learning that entire solo because there's so many good licks in there. Here's that part in full once more. Lick number five is a B.B. King lick. We can't talk about blues without talking about B.B. King. This is the first lick of the first guitar solo from the track The Thrill Is Gone. 
Now, one thing I really like about this is BB King doesn't really play a great deal of notes. He just has the ability to do and say so much with just a small handful of notes. So this is a great example of minimalism and restraint in a guitar solo. And it goes like this. So this is in the key of B minor. Now the first thing you might notice there is that I left a huge pause and that was actually intentional. That's actually what he does in the track. So those are a big staple in BB's playing. Sometimes it's best to just say nothing at all and just let the backing music do the talking and you just kind of fill in some gaps as you go. So starting off on the seven of the B string, playing that twice before going to the seven on the E. And that happens on the tail end of a bar. So we land on the seven on the E on the one beat. So we're kind of going and one. And then BB lets the entire bar ring before he goes to the next phrase. The next phrase comes in at the end of the first bar, which is 10 twice on the E string, 12 on the E, and then we land on the 12 of the B on the one of the next bar. So he's always kind of topping and tailing the bars, which is really interesting. The next phrase is very much BB King. So we're playing 12 on the B, 10 and 12 on the E. Then we're doing a half step bend on that 12 of the E, then playing it as a normal note. 10 on the E with a half step bend, 12 again, and then a full step bend on the 12. Then we're playing 12 on the B again, 10 with a half step bend, 12, then two half step bends on the 10 again. So here's those two lines together. Now we're playing 12 on the B, 10 on the E. So again, there's not a ton of notes there, but it's the phrasing that really counts. Then we've got a bar and a half, we're pretty much doing nothing, before we hit the 19 twice and slide it out. That's a very typical BB King thing there. So if you added that onto the lick before, there's a lot of space there, but again, that is the BB King thing. Leave that space, let the backing music do the talking and you just say the words that you need to when you need to say them. It's a great exercise in restraint. Here's how that sounds in full. The sixth lick we're talking about is another blues classic. This is from the John Lee Hooker track, Boom Boom. Now this is another one that kind of goes between the idea of playing rhythm and lead at the same time. If you're new to playing guitar or playing blues, you can choose to not play the chordal part of this because it's kind of a call and response thing where you've got a lick and then a chord riff, a lick and then a chord riff. So you can leave bits of this out to suit your own ability levels as well. So here's how this one sounds in full. So just like the Freddie King track Highway, there's a couple of different things at play here. We're doing a chord pattern and a call and response thing with the lead line. So the lead line is in the key of E minor, uses the first position of the minor pentatonic in the open position and the second position as well. So starting off with this slide from the two to the four on the G, the three on the B, but we're just brushing the open E as well, and then playing the four again and sliding back for pulling off to the open two on the D, and then open on the D with a hammer onto the two. 
Then the chord phrase happens. It's E, third fret on the E string, A, third fret again, and then the E. So we're basically doing this. It's like a walking bass line. That's the bit you can leave out if you find that tricky because it is quite hard to jump between the lead and the rhythm. The second phrase we're doing starts on the second fret of the D, and then it goes to the open G. Third fret on the G, slide to the two, pull off the open. And then two on the D, open on the D with a hammer onto the two. Then the E based chord phrase. So that's the first two parts. Then we have the third phrase, which is the open D, the third fret on the B with a pull off, two on the G with a pull off, two on the D, open on the D with a hammer onto the two. Then this chord phrase is A, the third fret on the A, D, the third fret on the A, A. So it's the same thing, but we just dropped it down a string. So instead of E to A, this one is A to D. Then the fourth lick you're gonna play is the same as the second one. Then we're ending on the E chord again. So if you want, you can just play either the single note walking bass line or just leave out the chords altogether, or you can put them all together depending on where you feel you're at with that one. If you're gonna add the chords in, make sure you play the licks slow just to get the kind of interplay between the two things, then build up the speed and it should sound like this. All right, and the final one we're gonna do is Red House by Jimi Hendrix. We can't really talk about great blues licks without talking about Hendrix. So I'm back on the Strat style for this one. This is actually tuned down to E flat, but I'm playing in standard tuning today. This is a really cool, again, blues 12 bar setup lick. It's got a cool chordal intro before going into some really nice bluesy licks. It sounds like this. <laughs> So this is a really fun one because there's a couple of different elements to this. So we're starting off with this chord shape here, which looks a little bit like your standard D7 chord, but we're playing it on the 11 of the G, the 10 on the B, and the 11 on the E. So we're sliding into the 10 and 11 on the B and G. Then we're playing the 11 and the 10 on the E and B with like an upstroke. And then I'm playing G, E, G. Let that G ring for a little bit, and then we're playing G, E, G, E, G, E. Then we're coming down, we're sliding into the 10 and 9 on the G and B, and then playing E, B, E, B, E, B, E, B, E, B. And then on that last one, I'm just hitting the chord on an upstroke. I'm really focusing on the E and B strings there, though. And then I'm hitting seven on the low E to stop. Three bends on the 10th fret of the B string, up a full step. First two you bend up, the third one you bend up and down. Staying on that 10th fret of the B, we're doing a bend, then the 10 on its own, a bend, then the 10 on its own. Nine on the G with a bend up, seven on the B and E. Then we've got this little fast phrase, 10, seven on the B, nine, seven on the E, 10, seven on the B, bend the nine on the G. Then seven, 
hammer onto nine on the G, bend that nine up a full step, and back to the seven again. So this is just a great example of Hendrix playing some pentatonic bluesy licks. Again, it's a great setup phrase because when the actual pentatonic playing kicks in, the 12 bar progression started. So he's actually using those two chords in the intro to kind of set the entire thing up and then everyone joins in and you go from there. Here's how this one sounds in full. This is a great example of Hendrix's bluesier playing. <laughs> So there you go, there are seven blues licks that I think are some of the greatest of all time and are great kind of accessible licks to get you into playing blues. They'll give you plenty of ideas to take, mold, improvise with, basically steal all those ideas, transpose them, do whatever you want with them and put them into your own solos because they are great. And they're all from great blues players. Let me know down below in the comments how you've gotten on with learning these licks. And if there's any classic blues licks you think I've missed from this list or classic blues licks you think people need to know about, throw those down below in the comments as well. Like I said, you can go down to the link in the description, head over to the Music Radar website and check out the full length article. That's basically the accompaniment to this lesson. If you want the tab files, you can get those via my Patreon link down below in the description as well. While you're checking out those links down below in the description and leaving a comment, don't forget to hit that like button as well. And if you're new to the channel and you've enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing as well. Subscriptions help the channel to grow and keep on making videos like this. Thank you all so much for watching as always, and I'll see you very soon.